Fantastic. This is just a dowel rod. This one happens to be an inch and a quarter in diameter. It's made out of oak. It's 36 inches long. You buy one of these at any do-it-yourself store or hardware store. Sand it down really well using three different grits of sandpaper. Always start with the coarse grit, about 80 grit first, and you go to 110, then you go to 220. That makes it really smooth. You just have to sand it a little bit at a time, about 30 seconds per paper. Make sure you sand all of it and then soak it in some good boiled linseed oil or mineral oil, any type of uh, wood finishing oil. And then the moisture starts to come back into the stick and it becomes more pliable, it becomes stronger, less likely to break. And then you have your homemade self-defense walking stick. I wanna show you how to use it for self-defense. There are three ways that you're going to take this into a protecting position, into a guarded position where you put the stick between you and the threat for self-defense. The first way with your hand on top, as if you're walking down the street, is sliding your hand down the front of your homemade walking stick for self-defense. When you slide your hand down the front of the stick, then you just point your thumb at the threat. Remember, you're gonna keep the stick between you and the threat. Point your thumb at the threat, and that puts it into the other hand. Now you're holding it like you would a riot baton, and you can sham, shove it just like this. Thrust it is what I was looking for. Good afternoon, Justin. It's good to see everybody this morning, or this afternoon. Slide your hand here, pick it up here. Step in when you thrust, when you step and thrust, extend your arms and turning your shoulders and hips a little bit, you're gonna generate maximum stopping power. Let's say this is the threat, you slide your hand down the front, point it, step in, knock him out of there. Aim for the center line, all of the vital points that you're trying to remove or destroy for self-defense usually are gonna come in the center line of his body. The eyes, the nose, the teeth, the throat, that's permanent. Be careful with that, don't play around with that unless you really have to defend yourself into the solar plexus, into the soft uh, tissue between the belly button and the privates. Good afternoon, Doug. Good afternoon, Justin. Your hand slides down, point, and thrust. That's the first way to get it into the guard, putting it between you and the threat. The second way is sliding your hand down the back of your walking stick, your homemade walking stick for self-defense. And then you can simply punch with a jabbing motion, punch thrusting into the center line. Again, think of the center line, what can you remove or destroy, his ability to see you or breathe temporarily, permanently through the throat. Hello, um, Garen, it's good to see you. Yeah, uh, Garen says he remembers the original Walking Tall movies. Uh, Buford T. Pusser, or whatever his name was, the sheriff who put his gun to the side and picked up a stick and said, he was following uh, Theodore Roosevelt. It's also an African proverb, I've been told. Speak softly and carry a big stick for self-defense. So from here, your hand slides down the back. You can step in and thrust, always get your other hand up. Between you and the threat, your hand slides down the back and then you can immediately employ it in self-defense with that simple thrust. Think about stopping the attack, immediate direct explosive, shortest distance possible between you and the threat's nose, teeth, throat, solar plexus, it's gonna be that straight line. You're always aiming simply for the center of his body. Now the third way you might be carrying it is like this. You're walking along, you're not leaning on it as a walking stick, you're simply carrying it in this position. This is also very popular and common. You're carrying it like this, you can turn your thumb or your palm facing up to get it to the other hand. You have that chopping strike, it's very powerful, very effective. From here, you could also do a thrusting. Think about a rifle butt strike or a bayonet strike coming the other way. Or you can turn your hand over, palm facing the ground. The hand comes here just like you would be doing some push-ups. You can also do a chopping strike. That's still very powerful. You can use the short end of the stick. You can lift this up under his groin, bring it up under his chin down over the top, striking right through his center line. Always going for the vital spots of the body to stop the attack. Using violence against violence, this is self-defense. Hello, Tony, it's good to see you. So again, three ways, and we're gonna talk about different techniques. The first way, to get the stick between you and the threat, slide your hand down the front, point the stick. Just point it at the threat, we're gonna call that the threat. From here, you thrust, bring it to your shoulder. You can do all these with a single arm strike. 
I started a video yesterday and wasn't able to finish it, but the question that I get a lot lately is what happens if you're paralyzed, if you don't have use of one arm, you only have use of this one arm for self-defense. Can you use one arm self-defense techniques using a walking stick or a walking cane? And the answer is absolutely. There's no limit to what you can do. Use your imagination and practice. Slide it down the front, pick it up, thrust. You bring it from your shoulder, from your other shoulder, always from your shoulder and never from out here in outer space, right? If you bring it out here, you're going to, he can close that distance. You're gonna wrap your arm right around his body and you'll never hit him. If you bring it from your shoulder, turning your shoulders and hips, it's a very powerful, powerful strike coming straight through the middle, straight through the middle the other way. From here, the second way, sliding your hand down the back, then you get it into this position. You can pick it up and thrust. You can put it in the other hand, you can attack here, bringing it down over the top, striking here, maybe going for the legs, around the other side. You can also do all of these with one hand, coming in. This is one of my favorite moves, it's very powerful. Using your whole body to turn, straighten that arm, and the force of the turn of your torso one of your biggest muscle groups, the, all the muscle groups that make up the torso, right? Your front and your back, turning into this arm becoming a big lever, holding tight. You jab that into his ear, neck, into his ribs, into the soft tissue under the ribs, into the leg if you're in that chair. There are a lot of things you can do simply by turning your shoulders and hips and swinging that arm. The third way is if you're holding it in this position, turning your palm up, you can strike immediately thrust and always thrust from this position or turning your palm down and bringing it here thrusting thrusting shoving batting the sides of his head for self-defense or his ribs very effective so those are the three ways that you get this into a better position for self-defense now i mentioned better position for self-defense because that's one of the principles of self-defense whenever you use any kind of self-defense but especially if you use a stick when you want to learn how to hit somebody with a stick for self-defense how to use your homemade walking stick for self-defense self-defense training at home you always have to think in terms of principles number one situation awareness pay attention to what's happening around you right now it looks like a monsoon outside i don't know if you hear the thunder number two get into a better position put the stick between you and the threat you have reach advantage if he has a knife he has a bladed weapon you have reach advantage using your 36 inch homemade self-defense walking stick. Now, the reason I want you to train with a dowel rod that you buy at a home uh, hardware store, do-it-yourself store, less than $10, a little bit of sandpaper, a piece of sandpaper, used to be 80 cents, I think it's probably a couple bucks now. And then, yeah, Doug says, or hit him in the sternum. Uh, get some mineral oil on it and soak this thing with oil. You gotta oil it every day for two weeks when you first start to use it because it comes from the kiln, or comes from the uh, supplier, when they send it to the hardware store, the do-it-yourself store, they kiln dry it. Just like with when they make pottery. It's not as hot, obviously. It's a low heat, but it's long, and they suck all the moisture out of it so it doesn't get rot. It doesn't rot. But that means it's more brittle. You have to sand all the rough stuff off so you don't get a handful of splinters, and then start to, um, yeah, and Garen says all that core training comes in handy. You get all that oil into the stick and you, the oil from your hands are going to feed this stick too that's how this becomes a part of your soul part of your body an extension of your body but do make sure you oil this every day when people contact me and they say i got a self-defense tool got a walking staff or this is also known as the japanese or okinawan hanbo martial arts staff um yeah J uh jca drumming asks, can we talk about stopping a rushing dog i will talk about that right after this uh, but yes, uh, definitely. Something I talk about all the time. It's something that, that, that we need because it happens all the time. But the, um, if, it, when, when I get people call me and, or they, they send me some emails and they say, I keep breaking them and what am I doing wrong? You need more oil. You need more oil than you think you do. But you only have to oil it like every day for a few weeks and then every couple weeks and then every three or four months. But keep it oiled up. You'll feel it. And it'll become, you know, you're not going to bend it but you're gonna feel it becomes more flexible. And if it's flexible, it's not gonna break. If it's not flexible because it's too dry, 
it's gonna break. Also, all that oil is gonna make it heavier so that when you do your self-defense strike, it hits a lot harder. And I prefer this inch and a quarter, but an inch is good, even a little bit less than an inch if your hands aren't as strong, that's also good. Get what works for you. The reason I like these homemade self-defense sticks is you can train with it and then carry a nicer looking stick if that's what you do normally. You carry nicer looking sticks, use this as your trainer, beat it up. If you don't have a bag, get a stack of tires, uh, wrap a pole with some, some foam or some um, you know, old carpeting, that's a great one. Carpet, like thick carpet people throw away with the padding and then wrap it up with some duct tape and then you have something to practice your strikes against. If you don't have anything to practice your strikes against, that's okay, practice striking in the air. Now, let's talk about the rushing dog. The most important thing to remember about any animal that's rushing you or attacking you is that if you can control their head, you can control their body. Now, they don't have opposable thumbs, unless you're fighting a monkey, and God forbid, let's hope we're not doing that. Um, but let's, let's stick with the dog, right? Dog, down here, you gotta worry about wild boar sometimes. Sometimes there are other uh, coyotes, but they don't really attack people that much. Sometimes bobcats, they don't, they don't come looking for you. There are uh, cougars, or whatever they call them down here, panthers. That's something you do have to worry about if you're way out in the woods, but it's not that common. If you hike out west, in the mountains, you can go to places where it is common. You gotta pay attention to the mountain lions. And then of course, bears. That's a, you know, that's a big beast that you have to worry about. But let's talk, let's stick with the dog. Let's call him a pit bull, right? Or call him two or three or whatever he is, right? He's hybrid, he's, he's out uh, messing. You're trying to walk your dog, you're carrying your stick for self-defense or just to get around because your hip hurts, your knee hurts like mine does sometimes. And the dog comes up and attacks the, your dog or is coming after you or whatever. You want to go for the face, for self-defense. Now, I'm not advocating hitting an animal ever out of anger or trying to hurt an animal. Of course, I love dogs. I love animals. Um, but I'm talking, but we know this is a real situation. You see, if you read the news, you look at the news, and I look for it a lot, there are pit bull maulings. And it's not always pit bulls, but it's mostly pit bulls. And it happens daily in the United States. So from here, if he's coming at you, you have to worry about his, his jaws, right, his mouth. And the most important thing to remember, especially a pit bull, is if you stick something in its mouth, just like if you were playing with your own dog, he's gonna wanna hold that. If he's holding that stick in his mouth, if you can stick that into his mouth and he bites down on it, he's trying to rip it out of your hands, that's good because now he's messing with the stick and he's not trying to clamp onto your arm or your leg, and what he really wants is this, right? That's really what they go for. So if you can stick that in their mouth as they're coming in, and you're not, uh, you're not swinging at it, right? You can, I don't suggest it. I think stand your ground, keep your knees bent a little bit, and then go in for the mouth. Now, if they do happen to get past that, you can use the stick and you apply pressure into the face into the eyes of the animal, going into the eyes, into the nose, and that's what you're striking. If they get a hold of you, that's what you're going for. Don't worry about hitting his hind side. Don't try to hit him in the ribs. Don't worry about hitting his legs or whatever. It's always gonna be the face. Now, we can go into more detail, but that's the basic idea. If you can get something into his mouth, if you have a jacket, you take your jacket off and throw the jacket into his mouth and let him fight against that, then that's much better, again, than if he's latch down and he's trying to rip your arm off or rip the skin off your arm. Once they clamp, they don't let go. They just, they try to rip and tear. So get something in his mouth. That's, and that's, that's not my suggestion. I've, because you guys ask me this question all the time. I've talked to the experts and the experts say, get something in his mouth as soon as you can. If you have a shirt, you can take it off. If you have a bag, you can stick it in his mouth. If you're carrying anything, you can stick it in his mouth, do that. Let him fight with that because that's what he really wants. If it's just your stick, that's where you put the stick. If he does happen to grab hold of you, he's, yeah, it's going to hurt. He's going to rip you up. But you take the end of it and you strike or you go into the face and you strike using your self-defense homemade walking stick. Now, let's talk about uh, the principles again. Situation awareness, pay attention. Don't watch your phone while you're walking around. Stick in your pocket. Pay attention. If you can avoid it, avoid it. Don't be there. If you can run away from it, run away. If you can hide, hide from it. But if the threat is right there, let's say this is the threat, he caught you off guard, 
or you didn't have any other choice, you had to go by, by him this way, all of a sudden you uh, don't feel safe, put your hand here, put your hand here, but either way you're going to get the stick into a better position between you and the threat. Now, you have a choice. This choice can be a little bit less threatening, right? You slide your hand down the back, you put it up like this, hey, back up. Always get your other hand up, by the way, if it's not on the stick. You know, back up, uh, don't come any closer, you're too close, stop. And then if you have to, and people tell me all the time, well, that doesn't seem like a very powerful strike, especially when we practice it here. We practice it a lot in these self-defense classes. And we pressure test it. That means we put a little bit of gear on, and then we role play so that it, we know it works. We know what's going to work, and we know what's not going to work. We don't want any frivolous, silly techniques. So from here, that simple thrust, that hard piece of oak against his nose, against his teeth, against his uh, JCA drumming says he's been rushed uh, twice lately by a dog. I'm sorry to hear that. I know it's happening a lot more often. And as, as, as people at the bottom who often might have dogs that are a little bit more aggressive and they're raised in a, in a different way than people in the suburbs might raise them and um, you know they're losing their housing, gas, price of gas, five, six bucks a, a gallon, price of food is up 29, 30%. You can see what's happening. There are a lot more dogs, you know, people don't take them to the pound. They just let them off the chain. And, and this, is, this is a real thing. This is something, I'm, like I said, I've been studying it. This is what's happening. That's why there are a lot more uh, dogs. It's not always the case that it's a, a dog that's been let off the leash, but oftentimes it's somebody who's lost their apartment, lost their house, they've been evicted, they've been foreclosed on, they leave the dog. They just let him out of the car, let him out of the house, and all of a sudden, now he's desperate. He's running around the neighborhood, attacking other dogs, attacking other people, and that's what you have to watch out for. Anyway, better position, put the stick between you and the threat, you can have it in this position. This hard piece of wood goes against soft flesh, teeth, soft flesh. What can you remove or destroy? That's a question you have to practice over and over in your head because it's going to calm you down and it's going to give you the idea of what to do next. If you say to you, if you get in this better position, now we're calling him the threat again, right? The bag's the threat. And I say to myself, what can I remove or destroy? It seems obvious. I want, I want to go for his eyesight. I'm going to stick this right through his face for self-defense. Or I'm going to bust his nose, all the blood, all the snot, all the uh, mucus is coming out. He's coughing. He can't breathe temporarily. Uh, I can get out of there fast. I'm gonna, that's, that's my target. So when you ask yourself the question, what can you remove or destroy? Take a deep breath. You'll know exactly what to do next, right? And your targets are always going to be in that center line. Not always, but often going to be in the center line. Nose, eyes, nose. You might go for the ear, right? Maybe it's not a thrust. Maybe his hands are in this position. You don't think you can get through. Maybe you come and you surprise for self-defense with that simple technique. And I say simple, but it hits really hard. And when you practice this, you'll see. It's just as, as simple as kind of like a hook punch, but you're turning and you're doing the hook punch with a hard piece of wood. Harder than his skin, harder than his nose, right? And just coming in here. Or maybe you're in this position and you think, his hands are here, he's trying to punch me. Maybe you go down and into that soft tissue, that thin muscle that holds his guts in. This is where Doug will tell you, Doug's law enforcement, uh, a lot of police officers, when you use your, your side, uh, either side handle baton, the PR24, or your riot baton, your target a lot of times is to lower yourself, get under his, you know, he's naturally up here, he wants to throw punches here, I'm going to get down, you're in a more protected position, tuck your chin, you're going to stick that right into that. When you hit someone with that right there, that's going to put them right on the, fun, the ground. Uh, Jeffrey, I just saw a little bit, do you use the cane for self-defense? It's my number one self-defense tool. It's what I prefer. I even prefer it over this. I love the homemade self-defense walking stick because it's accessible to anybody for less than 10 bucks, right? And a lot of people feel comfortable with this. They don't always feel comfortable carrying one of these. But this thing, that, this thing is designed. This is the Cane Masters Cane. You can check the first link below. This is my number one ideal self-defense tool. Number two is any other stick. And I want you to learn how to fight with sticks because sticks are everywhere. So from this position, better position, the hands between you and the threat, that's the second situation awareness is one. Self-defense principle number two, get a better position. Number three, take that breath and ask yourself, what can I remove or destroy? And that's where techniques come in. Now, you know where you want to hit them, you need different techniques. Thrusts 
are number one. That's my personal number one. That's my personal opinion. The shortest distance between me and his face is that straight line. And I'm going to go for that first. Now, that's not where you're going to stop. You don't stop till the fight's over. That's a self-defense principle for self-defense. Strike, lift it up, and then you can do a two-handed thrust. So you can come from here to here very quickly. From here, then you can get into these chopping strikes. Chopping from one side or the other side, into the side of the head, into the arm, into the ribs, into the hips, into the thigh, into the knee, into the pit bull's nose who's coming after you or whatever other animal. It doesn't always have to be a pit bull. Any type of vicious animal that is ripping people up or coming after you or trying to hurt you. And again, I'm not advocating cruelty to animals. I don't believe it's, it's uh, humane or right or anything. I'm just saying you have every right to defend yourself as a human being. It's your God-given right. So from here, better position. You have thrusts. Your hand comes down the back. This is one kind of thrust. You also have these turning strikes. A turning strike can be very fast, very explosive, and hard for him to see until it's up alongside the side of his head, right, for self-defense. So you turn. The way you do that is you push and your thumb goes down. It's like a punch, and, and if you do a proper punch, you have to turn your hand anyway to get full extension over the thing. So from here, punching and turning, I can thrust first and then add that one. I can act like I'm thrusting. He goes to respond to the thrust by putting his hands in front, and then it's coming to the side, right? So you can imagine by coming here, he's going to block this way, and then instead of coming through the middle, at the last second, you turn, and it comes up and either down over the top of his head or into the side, or you can even turn it lower. His hands are here. You can bring it into the ribs. You can bring it into that leg, and it's simply pushing and turning. From uh, Garen says the instep. Like if you guys are talking about other uh, places you can strike. This is awesome. I love when you guys put those in the uh, chat. Also put them in the comment section if you would. That's a great idea. You can have your hand in this position and just stomp it right, right on top of his foot. That can be your opening move. Um, I saw a little bit of that comment. I try to respond to the comments because that helps me understand what it is that we want to work on together. Now, from here, by putting your hand on the front, lift it up here, there's your thrusting motion. and You should always practice that over and over. From here, you can slide your hand down the front, bring your hand up over the back of your head and bring it down over the top of his head for self-defense. So from here, that's just, that's kind of like a pull cue motion, right? That gives you more reach, also more power. When you step with it, it gives you a lot more power. Always step with your strikes if you can, but if you don't have the time to, just move fast, pull your hand down the front. As you do that, you can see my hand is going onto the bottom. The back hand is coming up over top my head, over the top of my head, and then I'm gonna slide my hand along my stick, my homemade walking stick, homemade self-defense walking stick, as you bring it down and end the fight. Knock him unconscious, you don't have to worry about what other uh, tools he might have on him to try to hurt you, any knives or any guns or any things like that. So from here, yeah, Garen says he's got dogs and coyotes. Coyotes always run in packs, right? Sometimes dogs do too. From here, coyotes are generally smaller. If it's a wolf, you're in trouble. Your hand's here, your back hand's here. But the principles are the same, right? Defend yourself. No matter what it is, I don't care if it's a big old grizz, big old grizzly bear. Defend yourself. From here, I'm not saying it's gonna work, but the principles are the same. What can you remove or destroy? Grizzly bear has a nose, he has eyes, he's got a throat, right? Might have a, about a billion pounds of muscle and force, but you might as well do something. From here, thrust, slide, lift, strike. And that can come down over the top. You can bring that at an angle. And again, all the angles going straight down, striking any side of the body. And you can go from one side to the other side, like you're using a sword. And you're just going for what you can remove or destroy. You can break the arm. Go for the joints, they break easier than the arm does than the, the bone here for self-defense. This is all for self-defense. Yeah, Doug says elbow outside of the knees, very prone to breaking. Uh, in step, Garen said, uh, I was talking about, yeah, iron sides. <laughs> Love that iron side. From here, 
sliding down, thrusting. The last one, I said you're carrying it here, you can either turn your palm up. If you're here, you turn the palm up, you can turn your hips and your shoulders, and then very quickly, very powerfully, strike the side of the head for self-defense. If you're carrying it here, from here, you can step in and do your thrust, going through the throat, through the nose, through the eyes. What can you remove or destroy? That's the basic idea, basic principle. From here, you can turn your hand over, and then strike here. You can lift them up off the ground, doing your thrusts. You can push like you're pushing with this hard bar of oak right through his teeth, right through his nose, right through his throat, into his body. Maybe he's, he's standing or you're sitting. But just from here, now you can punch to the side, bashing with the ends. Turning your shoulders and hips, you're very powerful in this position. That also works if you have a split grip. You can still push here and it's still very effective. You're pushing here. You can still box the sides here. You can come down over the top. You can lift them up under here. And I wanted to show you from this position, just a quick explosive, I missed that one. Explosive move. You're just turning your wrist, right? Turn your wrist. Now, if your wrists aren't as strong, you want to go slowly at first and practice this move. And you can practice from outside to inside and inside to outside. One, two. This is also very effective. If he's starting to throw a punch or he's sticking his fingers in your face and, he, and you can tell he's aggressive and you're trying to talk him out of it and say, hey, babe, you know, back up. I also always prefer that you get to stick between you and him. But let's say it's coming. You don't have any time to respond. You just have to react Turn that hand and bring it up here for self-defense. So bring it up, strike in the arm. We gotta slow it down because this hurt. I whacked myself the other day in class showing, demonstrating the technique. But from here, coming inside or, or outside, as it were, or inside, right? So practice that. Put your hand here, bring it up. Put your hand here, step back and bring it up. Put your hand here, step to the side. If you can step to the side, the punch is coming this way, and you can move off the center line. With, always do that. If you don't have the mobility to move off the center line, don't do that. So what that means is this technique, stepping to the side, is always very effective. If you can learn how to move off the center line to the side without tripping yourself and falling over, do that. Practice that, and you'll be able to do that. Even if you go slowly at first, stepping. Notice that you're going to, if this is your right hand, you're going to step right, left. And when you step right, left, don't cross your feet behind one, behind the other, but step and create kind of a, a half of a turn. Create an angle. The strike, the threat, the uh, attack is coming here. You're stepping off the side, he can't see you. If you can't do that because you don't have the same mobility, because of an injury, because the way your body's made, because of age or anything else, then don't do it. Simply do this motion. You can't do this motion, stick it through his face for self-defense. But do something, right? If you do want to practice this one, practice stepping to the side. Once you step to the side, you do that first strike, get the other hand on it. Now, look what I did to get the other hand on it. I pull this back to, so that I can retain it. Weapon retention is something I also teach. I teach it with this, for a lot of people, because a lot of people conceal carry, and if they don't learn how to retain that, this is taken away. The mo most t common time is taken away from law enforcement and private citizens who conceal carry is not when it's in the holster and not when it's fully extended. It's on the draw, right? So I teach how to keep it to yourself and not have it taken away so that you can use it in self-defense. From here, it's the same thing. From here immediately, pull it in and get it back into this stronger position. If you just keep it here and he grabs it with two hands, you're gonna have a harder time keep it, wrestling it away from him. If you put it here and you pull it back, then even if he does start to put his hand on it, you're likely to pull it out of his hand and then you can stick it back in. You can take it away from him and give it back for self-defense. Those are the basic things I want you to practice. Thrusts, strikes, always coming off the angles, Never coming from outer space. Don't get in this habit. This is so bad. This will never work for you. Always from here. This is not a baseball bat. 
This is a self-defense tool. From here, even if you use a baseball bat for self-defense, use it from the shoulders. The basic rule, the basic principle of self-defense with this stick is keep it between you and the threat. You'd rather he hit this, slice this, stab this. And by the way, I don't know if you can see all the knife marks on it, but this doesn't bleed, right? This doesn't breathe. Yeah, and Doug, Doug, Bolts, Doug says, never use a holster without a retention system. Amen, <laughs> right? That should be common sense, but as we know, common sense isn't all that common. Um, from here, I want you to finish whatever your workout is, coming outside, inside, inside, outside. If you go outside to inside, step off to the, the side that the arc is made. So the, if you're making the arc with your right, step off to the right. If you're making it inside to outside, practice stepping off to the left. So you can practice one, back here, two, after a while, start to get the other hand up, get the other hand up, from here, pull it in, from here, pull it in. Get it into that stronger position so he can't take it away from you and hit you with it. When you hit him with it, it's self-defense. When he hits you with it, your self-defense has failed. Now you're a victim again. I want you to practice a legal disclaimer. I don't ever, ever advocate looking for a fight. Don't go for a fight. This is not for a bar fight. It's not for a street fight. This is purely for self-defense. This is so that you can feel safe leaving your home again. This is so you can feel safe in your home again. Maybe the state's by the, the front door. This is so you can feel safe when you go to the grocery store, or you go for a hike in the woods, or you go for a walk with your loved ones and your family, and you don't feel as safe anymore because of what's happening around us. It's for self-defense. That's it. You guys have been awesome. I will see you on the next one. Please give me a thumbs up if you haven't already. Join, subscribe, and uh, share this with others. Put your comments in the comment section below. That helps me. Yeah, Garen says keep it as close to your body as possible. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you so much.